The Bible isn't just a book of random stories. It's 66 different books that come together to tell one story. An incredible one about God's love for us. And now for an amazing story inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. Nehemiah tugged his cloak more tightly about him as the group of horsemen plodded across the rough ground. It seemed as though they had been traveling for years instead of months on the long journey from Babylon to Jerusalem. Home sweet home. Though Jerusalem was home to Nehemiah's family, he'd actually never been there before. The Israelites had been taken captive about 140 years before. Though some were allowed to return home and rebuild the temple, Nehemiah knew that his hometown was in rough shape. He had even gained permission from King Artaxerxes to travel to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls. And at last, he was nearing the home he'd never seen. There it is. In the distance, they could see rough piles of rock and stone. One of the men traveling with Nehemiah raised an eyebrow. We'll call him Jake. You call that a city? Ah, just needs a little work. Night was falling as they finally reached the broken gates. It was too late to examine the damage to the city walls. Better to check everything out in daylight anyway. No, my friend. I don't want our people here to see what I'm planning until I discover how bad the wall really is. Aha! Uh -huh, I see what you're doing. What am I doing? You're giving yourself a chance to back out of this whole wall building gig. No, I'm not. Then why the hush hush? I don't want people telling me it can't be done. Jake looked up at the charred beams and scattered stones that had once been a broad, high city gate. It can't be done. We'll circle the city at night. Soon. After we've had a rest. Inside the ruined walls, the men found more devastation. While the rebuilt temple stood high on the ridge, streets and houses were in shambles. Firelight flickered from the few homes that had just been repaired. Where's the welcoming committee? A scruffy, knobby kneed donkey wandered up to chew on Nehemiah's saddlebag. I think this little fella's it. Over the next few days, Nehemiah greeted the priests and officials who lived in Jerusalem, but he didn't tell them why he'd actually come. At night on the third day, he gathered Jake and a few friends to check out the wall. You want to ride the donkey? Uh, it's probably more sure-footed than I am, so, um, sure. The small group snug out through the nearly destroyed Valley Gate in Jerusalem's western wall. What wall? All I see is rubble. By moonlight, the men picked their way over small stones and huge boulders that had once been part of the wall. That's the jackal wall ahead. And there, the wall starts to curve back north at the dung gate. <laughs> what? You just said- That's the name of the gate, okay? Okay. The men followed the remains of the wall around the southern end of the city and doubled back north. Nehemiah's heart sank as the moonlight outlined the jagged mounds of charred rock just ahead. Can you still call it a gate if you can't actually get through it? Let's go around, little fella. If the donkey can't make it through, I don't think any of us can. Finally, Nehemiah turned back to return the way they had come. He stared at the jagged wall to their right. More gaps and holes than an actual wall. The wall is so long, thicker than a man is tall taller than several of you standing on each other's shoulders. <laughs> what? You actually thought you could rebuild it. I still do, with God's help. My friend, this is a fantastic job for someone else. I'll tell everyone our plan tomorrow. Let the officials know. Oh. <laughs> What? You're serious? No! Nehemiah must have known that the plan was nearly impossible. But the next day, he shared his plan with the priests, nobles, and officials who gathered before him. 
You can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Excusez-moi, but you are not telling us anything we do not know. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Okay, th that is new. If we have walls, the people won't be ashamed anymore. Is it not a bit, uh, how you say, um, pie in the sky? Oh. <laughs> oh, trust me. That's not gonna stop this guy. God is gracious. He's already helped by giving me favor with King Artaxerxes. We have his permission, and we can even use trees from the royal park for beams. What do you say? Hmm. I say, let us start to rebuild the wall! <laughs> the God of Heaven will give us success. Nehemiah grinned as he gathered several of the officials to begin planning. The job was big, but he knew God had chosen him for the work and would give him the strength to carry through.